we grow on our campus at Florida Southern College, our native plum tree, uh, the Chickasaw plum, Prunus angustifolia. That's what the picture is behind me in this as a background here. And just looking at those the other day, I thought that would make a beautiful soap. And um, it also occurred to me and several other people that if you put a little bit of purple up there near the stem, it would also have very much the color of a good ripe mango. So I was looking into how to get the colors to blend evenly like that from one shade to another and uh, ask on some of the soap making groups online and they said to try the ombre method. So this is gonna be my attempt at making an ombre soap in approximately Chickasaw plum or ripe mango colors. Just for some context, uh, these are ripe mangoes being sold at a market in Western Senegal a few years ago, showing the color range of ripening mangoes of different varieties. You can see there the dull purple, the reds, orange, yellow, and then how often they maintain a green tip to them right up until they're pretty well ripe. Here's the recipe that I plan to use. Um, I'm using a Essential Depot loaf mold that holds a 50 ounce recipe. And um, I'm gonna use castor oil, cocoa butter, coconut oil, olive oil, RSPO sustainable palm oil, and hyaluronic sunflower oil. This is a recipe that I've used in the past. I like it. It is uh, fairly soft, fairly slow uh, moving. So you've got a lot of time to work with it. To that, then I'm going to add uh, some sugar uh, for sudsiness. I'm going to add sodium lactate to make it easier to get out of the mold and a bit harder. And then I'm going to use Nurture Soap's Juicy Apricot Fragrance Oil. I think that seems appropriate for this color range. For my colors then, I'm going to use Brazilian Purple Clay, which gives kind of a dull shade of purple, which is uh, realistically what the purple end of a mango looks like if it's one of those varieties that makes purple. And then it switches from that kind of dull look to the bright shiny colors. And so I'll move on then to Trial by Fire, which is a br bright neon type red, and then uh, neon red orange, and then neon orange yellow. And then my recipe here, recipe here says I'm going to use mimosa yellow. Actually, uh, I did use a little bit of mimosa, but mix that with quite a lot of uh, fluorescent neon orange to, excuse me, fluorescent neon yellow to make it a uh, much brighter yellow, less gold than the mimosa would be. And then the green, um, trying to imitate the shade of green that you get at the uh, far end of a mango as I'm using a mixture of celadon green and apple moss green. And all of those colorants are from nurture soap, except for the apple moss green, which is from brambleberry. I should say also that uh, I want to thank Lara Waldo for being the videographer for the uh, soap making part of this video. Lara is herself an experienced soap maker and uh, I pre appreciate her help here. My oils are at 85 Fahrenheit. My lye water is at 112, so nice and cool. This should be a nicely slow recipe anyway. I have the various pigments, um, about three quarters of a teaspoon of each in the Dixie cups, and then about two teaspoons of water in each of those. And that water is part of the recipe water. I made some of this same recipe earlier and I know that it moves very slowly so I just want to get it to a good emulsion here before I put it in the cups. This is getting to be a, a nice emulsion. It's, it's not really thickening much at all but you don't see any oil sheen on the top anymore so I think it's about ready to pour into the individual colors. Thank you. 
And just thinking about the way an actual mango looks, the green end and the purple end, there's never as much of those colors as there are the yellows, oranges, and reds in between. So I think, depending on the volume of my Dixie Cups, I'm going to try to increase the volume of these middle colors keep the two end colors less. So at one scoop of each, I think I've used about half of my batter. I'll not put in any more in the green for now. I wouldn't mind having a little more purple because most mangoes move from purple to the other colors, so a fruit that's not perfectly ripe would still have quite a lot of purple on it. But I don't think I want any more of the green. Oh, maybe a little, just because I'm gonna have so much of these other colors. that. I've got less than half as much green as everything else and just slightly less purple. I've been stirring these quite a lot and they're still not a trace but definitely even better emulsified. I ended up with more of the purple than I had originally hoped for. Um, so I'm going to use quite a lot of it before I start mixing colors because I want there to be quite a lot of red left. I'm just going to use, I think, most of this. Now for the ombre process, you mix these. Again, I'm using more volume for this one mix than I think I will on later colors, but I just kind of want to get rid of that. Now, the plain red. And I'll start adding some orange to it.
all of this cup. And then a little bit of the pure reddish orange. slanted. Some of the pure yellowish orange. I'm going to use a little more of this as well, just because I don't want a lot of green toward the end. So make this a little less slanted. Now I will spray that with alcohol and I'm going to give it kind of a cool uh, CPOP treatment. I'll, I'll put it at 55 Celsius. 
for a couple hours and then we'll look at it tomorrow. It's got a little bit of bubbles there, but hopefully they'll come out. It is the next day and so the soap is hardened and I'm going to take it out of the mold. I like the top. Interesting. There's the end. I'll show close ups of these in a little while. I'm liking that. This is plenty hard enough to handle and work with, but it's it, it's not hard. It's, uh, I'd say, kind of like Monterey Jack cheese. I could easily dent it if I pressed on it with my fingers with any level of pressure. bars turned out fairly consistent and uniform um, from one bar to another. I, I kind of like that. I like the color combination. Um, if I do it again and I'm trying really for more like the plums or the mangoes, I think we could use substantially less of the red-purple range and more true yellow. But I sure don't dislike this at all. I think it's quite pretty. Once these harden up for a few days, I'll, I'll uh, bevel the edges off and maybe do a little bit of planing, but they won't need much. I think they look really good right now. So I got 10 bars out of that, and I'm pleased with them. Here are some tops and then sides. And the other side, on the right, and then on the left, those are bottoms. Um, and because I started out with the purple and used quite a lot, the bottom is totally purple, which I think is fine. 